So in this video, we're going to be looking to analyze a simply supported beam using ANSYS Workbench 2024. So we're looking here at a beam AB made of a structured steel and that is 10 meters long. And this beam is simply supported. So we have a pin support at A and a roller support at B. And this beam is loaded at a mid span at point C with a force of 100 Newton applied vertically downwards. So as we would imagine, the beam is going to deform, as we can see here in red, its elastic shape. What we want to do is to find the support reactions, the deflection of the beam at C. We want to draw shear and moment diagrams. And we want to find the maximum stress in the beam. So first, I would like to review our understanding of a pin support and roller support. What does a pin support do? A pin support, when applied to a point on a beam, a beam here being represented by a line, each point really represent a face of the beam and what this pin support is doing if i think that my beam is in 3d is in so i'm looking here at my x y and z direction this pin support is preventing translation in x y and z but because the point represent a face we are going to have six degrees of freedom at each point three translational degrees of freedom, and three rotational degrees of freedom. And what this pin is doing is allowing the face of the beam to rotate about X, about Y, and about Z. In this particular scenario, with the load being applied in the vertical direction or in the Y direction, we know that the beam is going to rotate about the z-axis. So we expect a rotation about the z-axis. This is what a pin support is doing. On the other end of the beam, we have a roller. And a roller, like a pin, allow for rotation about x, y, and z. It does not restrict all three translational degrees of freedom, but it rather allow translation in the direction of the face on which the roller is supported. So in this case, working, if the beam is in 2D in the X, Y direction, translation is allowed along the X axis, but is restrained in the Y, and also should be restrained in the Z because this is a 2D problem. So always remember when I'm working with beams and I'm modeling beams using beam element in ANSYS, the beam element being a one-dimensional element, each point represents a face or each vertex represents a face and is going to have six degrees of freedom, three translational and three rotational degrees of freedom. So if I uh, may represent that in a table, you would see here that for a pin support, all translational degrees of freedom are restrained and all rotational degrees of freedom are free. These greens means it can rotate about X, Y, and Z. As for the pin support, it still get the free rotational degrees of freedom as well as one free translational direction. So we are gonna move into ANSYS workbench and we're going to model this beam. We're going to create the geometry using Design Modeler, and we're going to analyze it using ANSYS Mechanical. So I'm starting here with a fresh project, and I want to make sure I pick the right units. I'm going to go to Units, and I have the metric system selected so we have kilograms meters and uh, newtons 
that's what we want I'm gonna start by saving the project so I'm gonna go save as And I'm going to pick my folder. And I'm going to call my beam simply, call my project simply supported beam using beam elements to give it some description here. And I'm going to save that as my project. Just to remind you, We're going to be using structure steel, and it's one of the default material. But first, let me create an analysis system, a static structure analysis system by double -click clicking static structure. So here I created my system. I'm going to double click engineering data to show you the material. Looking at structure steel, I have here my structure steel uh, properties for uh, isotropic elasticity you can see young's modulus is uh, 2 times 10 to the power 11 pascal and i have a poisson's ratio of 0.3 so these are the material pro uh, properties that are needed i'm going to toggle back to project and i'm going to right click my geometry and i'm going to choose new design modeler geometry starting design modeler And I want to create my beam along the x-axis. So we have here our default planes. I'm going to turn them on so we can see them. I'm going to be looking towards the x-y plane. And looking at my ruler, my units are in meters. My beam is 10 meters long. So I'm going to zoom in on where my beam is going to go. And I'm seeing here on the ruler a 10 meter. I'm going to start by creating my vertices. So I'm going to go to create. And I'm going to start creating my, uh, points where we're going to have supports and where we're going to have loads. It is really important to note my beam is 10 meters long. I have point A and B. And it is a continuous beam between A and B. But because I'm going to have to apply a load at mean span, I am going to need a third point C. Otherwise, I'm not going to have a vertex that's going to be the father of where the load or is going to be the point is going to be applied to that vertex. So we're going to be creating three points. So I'm going to start going to create and I'm going to go to a point. I'm going to choose, it's a construction point, and simply we're going to choose manual input. So my coordinates for point A are 0, 0, and 0. I'm going to accept that and generate. And here comes my point 1, or I can name it as A. Next, I'm going to create point C. So I'm going to go to point and i'm gonna again choose manual input and this time my x coordinate is five meters i'm gonna create generate and here comes my second point i can uh, zoom in to see, so you can see your my points 
I can change the name of the point to C. And next, I'm going to create my third point or point B. So point, I'm also going to change the definition to manual input. And point C is, a 10, is at 10 meters along the x-axis. So I'm going to generate. And here comes my third point. I'm going to change its name to point B. Zoom in on the three points. And now we want to create an entity or a line that when we take it to ANSYS Mechanical, we're going to and generate a mesh automatically. We're going to see beam elements. So we're going to be using the line concept. We're not sketching the line, but I'm using a concept. And I'm creating line from points. So I'm going to go line from points. And I'm going to create two line bodies that are going to make a part. So I'm going to start by selecting my first point. I'm going to press the control key to select my second point. I'm seeing here the green indicating the geometry that I selected using point segments. I'm going to apply the color change to light blue. And we're adding material. That's our first body. As of now, I have zero parts, zero body. When I click Generate, now I can see I created a line. And I got my first line body that makes my part. This line body still does not have a section associated with it. So I have my first line body that I can come here and call it A, C. Next, I'm going to create another line from points. And this is going to be C, B. And it is OK to use add material. You may recall we have the option to either add material or add frozen. Should we have lines made of different sections, we're going to need to use add frozen to allow us to assign different section to each portion. In this case here, my beam is prismatic. ABC has the same rectangular section. So I can continue to use add material as I create the line C. B. So I'm going to start by selecting my first point, point C. Use the control key to select point B. I'm going to repeat that. Point C, control key, point B. Apply. It changed from green to light blue. And generate. I got here the line CB. Let me update here this line one by calling it AB. Now, because I am using add material, the name of the body is still showing as AC, while in reality it is ACB. So I'm going to update the name here to make it ACB. It extends through the lens of the beam, and I get one body that makes one part. So the remaining portion here is to assign a cross-section. My beam cross-section is a rectangular section that is 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Right? So we want to create a rectangular section. So I'm going to go to Concepts. I'm going to go to Cross-Section. And we have several default sections. The top, the very first one, is a rectangular section. So I'm going to choose a rectangular section. And here I'm looking at something that looks like a sketch. But really, this is just showing what the cross-section look like. And you're expected to define the base and the height. So my base is 10 centimeters. 
So I'm going to change that to 0.1 meter, and the height is 0.2 meters. So here is my rectangular section of 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters. We created the cross section, but the cross section is not yet assigned to my line body. So I'm gonna have to go back to my line body and you see where it says cross section not selected. I'm gonna come here and now I have the option to assign rectangular one. So I'm gonna select the rectangular one. And if you look carefully at the tree outline you see all the green check marks for completed entities but when it comes to the line body we have a yellow check mark meaning that this work is almost completed but there is still something that we can do to it if i select acb the line body what is it that is missing so let me show you here, if we look at the 3D for the line body, I'm going to turn off for a second my uh, default planes, and I'm going to do a little bit of rendering to see what, how the cross-section was assigned to that line. So I'm going to go to View and choose from View I'm going to choose cross-section solids. And let me zoom in here. When we look at how the cross-section was assigned to the line body, you would notice that if I load the beam vertically, the beam, like applied loads applied, uh, that are in the Y direction, the beam is going to be loaded about its weak axis because the strong axis is the one that has the shorter base. And I'm not going to like to load my beam this way. As a matter of fact, in many instances, we use eye sections because they have a stronger axis. Stronger, when I say stronger here, I mean a higher moment of inertia for the same area. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this section is oriented vertically. So it gets loaded about its strong axis. And I do have the option to change the orientation of this section. If I go to my line body and do a right click, I get the option that says select unaligned line edges. If I go to that, you see here, I only have one line body that is now highlighted. And you look at the detail view. It says cross-section alignment. By default, by default, ANSYS aligns the Y-axis of my section with the Z-axis. Let me clarify. If I go to my cross-section that we defined, you see here, the cross-section is in the X, Y direction. And if I zoom in, we have the base oriented along X and the height along the Y. What ANSYS does for a default, if I go to the line body, it takes the Y axis of the section, which, which you, may can see, you can see here in green, and orient the y-axis of the section with the z direction, with the positive z direction. So that's why we get we ended up with a beam that is going to be loaded. If I do not change the orientation, it's going to be loaded along its weak axis. And that's not desirable. So I need to go back and change the orientation. So I'm going to select the unaligned edge. And one of the things I can do is simply change the default from the plus Z to the Y Z. But before I do that, let me show you another way to do it. I can come here to rotate and assign a 90 degree or a minus 90 degree rotation. And look at this. With a minus 90 degree rotation, it rotated the cross section 
you see the direction of the y-axis, is now oriented with the positive y direction. And this allows me to choose any orientation. I can do, for example, a 45 degree angle. And look at this. So I can have my cross section oriented in any desirable direction as I wish. So I'm going to go back and set this to zero. That's not our desirable orientation because I want to show you another way that I can do. I can go to cross section alignment and come here and choose the positive, sorry, choose the positive Y direction. And this, if I go apply, it would align my Y axis of the section with the Y axis of my geometry. So if I go like apply, now I get my section oriented properly. And please note, as soon as I do that, I got a green check mark next to my line body. So now the geometry is completed. I can save my project from Design Modeler. If I go to File and say Save Project, so this way I do not lose my work. And now I'm ready to go back to Workbench. The geometry is completed, and I'm going to double-click Model to launch ANSYS Mechanical. So here comes ANSYS Mechanical. If I click the geometry, we will see the geometry that we got from Design Modeler or from Workbench. And uh, I can see the line. In order to make this uh, more visible, I'm just going to change the background color. You do not have to go through that step. So I'm going to change my background color to white, just to make it more clear. All right. So I think now you can see my line body. And it's always important to remember that we are using one-dimensional geometry and one-dimensional elements. Our units are in meters, so we're good. If I select the Z-axis, you can see here the line body. One of the things that you're going to notice that we do not see the points that we created. This is just a display. If I go to display, I can uh, turn on show vertices. And now we can see points A, B, and C. The first step we want to do here is I want to make sure my geometry or my model my CAD, my ACB line gets the right material. In this case, we are using the default structure steel. Should you want to use another material, you can come here and change the material. After verifying they have the correct material assigned, we are going to go to mesh to create the mesh. Before I do that, let me also show you that you can verify the section orientation as well here. If I choose like 3D and then turn on cross section, So if I go to the geometry, you can turn on and off the section. So remember, we are working with a line. But if I turn on the cross section, now I can see the orientation of my section. So this is the rectangular prismatic beam that we wanted to create. I see here the height. Remember, this is just rendering, but I'm really working with 1D element. So I can turn this off again and back to my mesh. 
I do not have a mesh yet generated. If I go to the context, the menu here, I can simply click generate and ANSYS is going to throw in a mesh for me. Again, we do not need all these elements. If I'm doing this by hand, I'm just simply going to use two beam elements and I'll be able to get the problem solved. But this allows, ANSYS does not know what we're going to be looking for or how is, this is going to be loaded. So it, it puts several elements within the beam. So I have the material, the geometry, and the mesh. Next, I'm going to go to my static structure analysis and start applying the supports as well as the loads. So I'm going to go look at supports here. And because I'm using beam elements, if I click under supports, I'm going to have the option to use a simply supported. And if you look at the description, a simply supported object prevent one or more straight or curved edges or vertex or vertices from moving or deforming. Rotations are allowed. And this is what a pin support do. So I want to apply that simply supported to point A. And please make sure when you're selecting, you're selecting a vertex not the line or the edge. So I'm going to apply a simply supported at point A. At point C, I have a roller support. And a roller is doing what a simply support is doing, but it is allowing a rotation sorry, allowing a translation along the X axis. So uh, a simply supported is not going to do that for me. But if I apply a displacement support, this allows me to manage or define the translational degrees of freedom while leaving all rotational degrees of freedom free. So you see here a description, a displacement, boundary condition. Displace a curve or an edge or a vertex by one or more components of displacement vector. So I'm going to choose a displacement support. And I'm going to pick, when I is asking me here to select a geometry, I'm going to select the vertex at B. I'm going to say apply. And you look here at the translational components. X needs to be free, but Y is going to be a zero, and Z is going to be a zero. And I click Enter. So now if I go to static structure, I have my simple support and my displacement support at A and at B. Really, the A and B you see here are for the constraints. Next, I want to apply my load, and we simply have a force applied at point C. So again, I want to make sure to select the vertex, not the edge. I'm going to say apply, and it is defined by, not a vector, but it is divided by component to make it simple. And I only have a component in the y direction, and we have a minus 1000 Newton applied downwards. And you see the icon here indicating the direction to be going vertically downwards. So now if I look at my static structure and I look at my graphics window, we see our two supports and load. And it looks like we are ready to run the analysis. Not really, but let's check. Please remember, we are working in 3D. We're working in 3D. And a beam element in ANSYS Mechanical may be used to model a bar in tension or compression, a beam in bending, or a shaft, or a frame member. So it allows for all of these types of loading 
and it does expect that our beam as a rigid body should be fully constrained in 3D. So just to run through the experiment, let me try to run the model, and then we're going to talk more about the problem we're going to have. So I'm going to go to solution, and I'm going to attempt to solve or to run the math, run the numbers to solve the problem. So I'm going to click solve, and now it's creating the model. And you see here that I get a red flash icon indicating that this failed to run. And if I look here at the error, we have a solver pivot warning error that has been detected. And it says degrees of freedom of node one located in ACB. This is usually a result of an ill-conditioned matrix possibly due to unreasonable material property and under-constrained model contact-related issues. Now, uh, having some understanding about how the finite element method works, if I do not have a fully constrained model, the engine is going to fail to run simply because I have a singular matrix. There is no solution if I do not have enough boundary condition. Which, when we look at this beam, we think, oh, this is a proper simply supported beam. That's correct if I'm simply looking at beams. But now I have to think about three, six rigid degrees of freedom. Sorry, six degrees of freedom for a rigid body that needs to be constrained. So let's examine our model. When I'm looking at this model, this beam, because of the supports I have, my beam as a rigid body cannot translate in X, cannot translate in Y, and also cannot translate in the Z direction. As a rigid body, my beam is restrained from rotating about the Z axis because I have two supports A and B. My beam is also restrained from rotation about the y-axis because of a and b but how about rotation about the x-axis i have two supports at a and b that do not restrain rotation and a and b only preventing translation so the beam is able to spin about its own axis. In reality, we know there are not any torques applied that are going to make the beam spin. But numerically, because that's a numerical solution, we end up with a singular matrix. And that's why there is no solution. So we're going to use a workaround here. My beam only has these supports. But in order to make the math work, I'm going to apply an extra support and I'm going to verify that this extra support is not affecting my solution. This extra support is going to be a rotational degree, sorry, a rotational support that uh, we call it here a fixed rotation. It says here, insert a fixed rotation object to allow to apply a fixed rotation boundary condition to a face or an edge or a vertex. Conditions apply to that support. So if I come and choose this fixed rotation, you look at the detail of a fixed rotation it allow me to choose whether I want to fix X, Y, or Z. Or I can fix all of them. Or none of them. We have to be very careful with this. Lest we over-constrain our model. 
So our beam needs to be free to rotate about the z-axis. If you look at the expected behavior of the beam here, you see that my beam is rotating about the z-axis. My beam should be free to rotate about the y-axis as well. We just want to make sure that it is not rotating about the x-axis. So if you read here in blue, we need to restrain all rigid body motion. Translation x, y, and z are restrained using this simply support and displacement. Rotation at y and z are restrained, but not x. The beam may spin if a torque is applied. ANSYS needs rotation at x to be restrained. We're going to use the fixed rotation away from any torques applied. Should we have a torque? So we really do not have a torque. To restrain the rotation at a specific direction, in this case, that would be the x direction. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I am going to be fixing the rotation about the x axis at point A. So I'm going to select point A. And here I did a mistake and accidentally selected an edge. You want to be really careful because if I do that, that's going to change your solution. So I'm going to redefine that by making sure I select a vertex and I'm going to go apply. I can see here a fixed rotation. Before I complete my definition, I really want a free rotation about Y and rotation about Z. And we need to understand why we're doing that. So here is my fixed rotation, now fully defined. If I move back and go come back to it, I see here fixed about X, but free about Y and Z. Now, if we run the solver, we should get a solution. So let me try one more time. Solve. And we already have a solution. Now, we do not see any results because we haven't defined any. But you see the green check mark next to my solution. First thing I like to see is the behavior of the beam. Is really the beam doing as I expected? So I'm going to go to my results. And I'm going to select deformation, total deformation. And let me create that, solve. And let's look at this beam and see what it is doing here. Does this look like the red elastic curve that we predicted earlier? Indeed it does. We see that the beam is bending about the z-axis with the maximum deflection being at mid-span. And at the two supports, the beam is able to rotate. In this case, because of the type of loading, is rotating about the z-axis. Should there be a load applied in the z-direction, we're also going to get rotation about the y-axis at any point along the length of the beam because it's not fixed to rotate. Rot the rotational degree of freedom about y and z is not restrained. Before I move any further, let me prove that this extra fixed rotation is not affecting the behavior. So I'm going to go to the solution, I'm going to use a probe, and I'm going to look at the moment reaction from this fixed rotation. If the reaction is zero, it meaning that this fixed rotation is not interfering with the performance. Okay, so I'm going to click here, solve. And let's read the moment reaction. Look at what I'm getting for a moment reaction about X. I'm gonna get I'm getting 7 times 10 to the minus 15. So you imagine that would be 0 0.0000000 000 000 something seven. Technically, this is a zero. So my fixed rotation 
is not affecting my solution, but is needed because that's a numerical method and we need to have all rigid body motion, the motion of rigid body, all degrees of freedom needs to be restrained. Next, let's look at our support reactions. So I'm going to go to solution. I'm going to use reaction, probe, and I'm going to look at force reaction. And I want to look at my pin support. I'm going to create another probe to look at the reaction at the displacement, which is point B. So I can come here and uh, rename that, call this force reaction at B. And the first one is the force reaction at A. Before I run the solution, if I have 1,000 Newton applied at mid-span, we already know that the reaction should be 5,000 at each of the supports. Let's solve and look at the reaction at A. Sorry, I said 5,000. It is 500. 1,000 is split into two. So I get perfect 500 Newton at A. And let's look at the other end. I also have a perfect 500 Newton. Next, we want to look at the deflection at point C. So I'm going to go with a probe, and I'm going to measure the deformation specifically at point C. So I'm going to go apply. And we would like to look at the Y component. Okay, which primarily the beam is moving on the Y, but when I select the Y, I'm able to see positive versus negative. And let me solve. Let's read the number. So I am getting here one negative, 1.56 millimeters at point C, which is the maximum displacement of the beam, maximum deflection at point C. So we are able to find the support reaction, deflection at C. Next, we want to be able to look at shear and moment diagrams. So I'm going to go to the solution. And the first thing I want to show you is that if you go to beam results, we can look at axial forces, beam mo bending moment, torsional moment, shear force and shear and moment diagrams. We should be able to read these numbers along the length of the beam. So I'm going to start first with these, then I'm going to get to shear and moment diagram. The axial force we expect in this should be a zero because I do not have any axial loads. So let me prove the points. I'm going to select axial force. I'm also going to select bending moment. You see here I'm creating solution. And this is a total bending moment, which is not going to show direction. It's just going to say, show the total bending moment. Next, I'm going to look at torsional moment. I don't have any torques, so that should be zero. Next, I'm going to look at a shear force. As we would expect, the shear force should be 500 throughout the beam, positive and negative. Positive on one side, negative on the other side. But if I'm looking at a total, I should just see 500. So let me solve and look at this. I click solve. And let's look at the axial force. I get a perfect zero throughout the length of the beam. If I look at the total shear force, I get the 500 that we expected or predicted through the length of the beam. Let's look at the bending moment. I have a zero bending moment at the two ends and the maximum bending moment at mid-span of 2,500 Newton meter, which is simply the 500 reaction times five. That will be the bending. Okay. Torsional moment is zero throughout the beam. Again, this fixed rotation is not affecting my solution. 
Now, in order for us to look at shear and moment diagrams, shear and moment diagram, I can draw shear and moment diagrams when we're working with beams, which uh, in many cases, that's not the common thing we do in uh, ANSYS when we're working with machine parts or complex geometry. But we do have that feature. So shear and moment diagram. If I click shear and moment diagram, you see here, the first thing is asking me for a path. And I really do not have a path. So we need to create a path first to describe the edge where we want to plot shear and moment diagram, which is really going to be A, B, C, right? Sorry, A, C, B or A, B, right? The beam. So in order to do that, we are going to go to the model and from the, the outline. And I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to say insert. So I selected model at the very top. Then I select insert. And I'm going to select from insert. I'm going to go to construction geometry. And the first option here is a path. So that's simply a construction geometry. And it says here, insert the path object to represent a spatial curve to which you scope results. So I want to scope my shear and moment diagram to ACB. So I'm going to select this path. And now I want to create my path. I, do not, I want to make sure not to create it using points, but rather I want to create the path using an edge. And I'm going to select my two edges. So I'm going to come here for the geometry. I'm going to select AC first. Then I'm going to click my control key and select CB. So now I have one construction path. I'm going to select apply. And you see here point one and two. So my path extend from the left end of the beam to the right end of the beam. I'm going to go back to my solution. Total shear and moment diagram. And for the path, now I can see the path that we created. I'm going to select this path. And I do have the option to create total shear and moment diagram, or we can specify. Let me first start with the total, which is just going to show the magnitudes. So I'm going to click solve. And here are my diagrams. You see for the shear, I'm getting 500 Newton meter throughout. Remember, this is a magnitude. It's not showing the direction. For the bending moment, I'm getting the 2,500. And it also shows you the elastic curve. Please remember, the beam is deflecting downwards. But because this is just a magnitude, it's showing a positive value and it's going upwards. Can I go from total to directional? Yes, but we want to be careful that ANSYS is capturing the right direction. So how would I do that? I'm going to come here and change that from total. Uh, let me create another one. I'm going to leave this as total, but I'm going to create a right click and I'm going to say duplicate without results. And I'm going to change from total to directional. And if everything is correct, this direction really should be VY and MZ. In the earlier, early, earlier release of ANSYS, we had a bug. Let's check if this is still there in 24 or not. So I picked VY and MZ. And let me solve for that. And when you look at the results here, it is looking, it's looking as if nothing is happening in the Y direction and in the Z direction for the moment, which is not correct. So the bug that we had earlier is still there. And in order to work around that, I'm just going to have to change the direction to make it VZMY. These are not the correct directions. But I'm going to use that and evaluate the results. And this looks more like what we expect, except that the directions are flipped. So we see a minus 500, a plus 500, and the moment is showing as minus 2500 
when we know we have tension at the bottom, compression at the top should be positive moment, but the deflection here is shown going in the correct direction. So please be aware that this is not the correct designation and the directions are also flipped, okay? But at least it shows us here an indication of what shear and moment diagrams and the elastic curve looks like. The results for these diagrams may be exported. You can come here and click export and you can export it into a spreadsheet and work with it as you wish, okay? The very last thing we want to do for the solution here, I want to look at stresses. And when you want to look at the stress for a beam, I'm going to have to use a toolbox from the solution. And this option is only available when you have beams. The reason we have to use the beam tool, because if you go to result and stress, you're going to see that all your options are grayed out because I do not have any solid elements. I only have beam elements. So I'm going to have to go to my toolbox and choose the beam tool. Now, if you, if I expand the beam tool from the outline, I'm going to see here a direct stress, minimum combined stress, and maximum combined stress. If I right click my beam tool, I can come here and go to the beam tool stress, and I can also insert a maximum bending. And I'm gonna explain the difference. I can come here and right click and say insert beam tool stress and do at minimum bending. So now I really have five different type of stresses, a direct, combined and bending max and min, all right? So a direct stress is simply the axial stress that results from a normal force. Because the normal force is a zero or the axial force is a zero, my direct stress should be zero. The axial stress from bending would be the maximum bending stress or minimum bending stress. The reason we have max and bend because, and minimum because it's tension on one end, compression on the other end. For a rectangular section, the magnitude is going to be the same for max and min, but that may be different depending on your section. A combined stress is the combination of the bending stress and the direct stress. Because the direct stress here is zero, the maximum combined should be as the same as max bending. Let's prove the point. So I'm going to come here and click solve and let's look at our solution direct stress is zero maximum bending i get here 3.75 million pascal at the center of the beam as expect if i look at the maximum combined i get the exact same result okay minimum it will be the same but negative and minimum bending stress also i get sorry the minimum bending stress i get also the same number but in negative and this is for tension and compression so when the problem asks for the maximum stress we know that the maximum stress or we have found that the maximum stress is acting at the center of the beam and is like a three point um, 75 million Pascal. All right. So again, remember for shear and moment diagram, VYMZ is truly VZMY. VZMY is truly VYMZ with shear directions flipped. So the direction of the shears are flipped in ANSYS. So please remember that when you are looking at the results. So with that, we are able to analyze that simply supported beam in uh, using Workbench 2024 R1.